The year, 2005. The role, data analyst. The hardware, not so great. I'm Jen and a lot has changed since I started working in analytics. The term big data was new on the scene, having been newly coined to reference the massive amount of data that companies were starting to deal with. This massive amount of data, 0.1 zettabytes of new data created in 2005. It was hard to even imagine in 2005 that this year, 2020, we'd be creating between 35 and 40 whole zettabytes of data globally just this year alone. The hot tech companies of the day certainly weren't FANG or even FAMG if you include Microsoft instead of Netflix. Facebook had 100 employees and was still exclusive to colleges, high schools, and was just starting to let in some businesses. Now they have over 45,000 employees and plan to hire another 10,000 this year. And now one in three people globally uses Facebook actively on a monthly basis. That's a mind blowing number. Amazon had just rolled out Prime and had one and a half percent of their current 840 thousand employees. Jeff Bezos was already a billionaire but hadn't even cracked the top hundred. Apple had just made waves with their first iPhone and was starting to experience a resurgence in popularity. They've added tenfold the number of employees that they had in 2005. Netflix still mailed you DVDs and your plan was based on how many DVDs you had out at a time, not on how many different TVs you were streaming on. They didn't start streaming until 2007. More relevant is Microsoft who was the biggest tech company by market cap in 2005 and is still a major player. They've more than doubled in size since 2005. Google was dominating in 2005. They captured a third of all search queries, but that sounds pretty pathetic compared to the 91% that they capture today. They've also grown from 5,600 employees to 114,000 employees. Who was tops in 2005? I already mentioned Microsoft was the biggest player in 2005. Google also made the list, but instead of Facebook, Apple, and Amazon, we had IBM, Intel, and Cisco. All still major companies, they're just not top of the list like they were in 2005. In 2005, it was rare to see postings for data analysts and certainly not for data scientists. Instead, most of these jobs were listed as mathematicians or statisticians. We see the remnants of this, especially in US government jobs who still tend to post most of their analytics positions as statistician roles. Regardless of title, there were many, many fewer positions than there are available in 2020. It was also common for these to be jobs that you aspired to later in your career. They weren't so common for new grads. Speaking of new grads, the first grad program that was dedicated to data analytics was NC State's program that started in 2007 with a 2008 graduating class. There's still a benchmark for data analytics and data science degrees. Because these positions tended to skew a little older and a little more experienced, it was a little odd when I stepped into this role as a new grad. I even remember some of my coworkers referencing me as the granddaughter of the team. Because analytics has become so popular, I've also noticed a trend in the skills of people that are entering the field. In 2005, you weren't generally stepping into the role because you had the right tech skills. You understood why you were doing what you were doing. You had a really solid math background that enabled enabled you to figure out what needed to be done and in some cases to manually do the work yourself. It's become much more common for new analysts to focus more on the tech heavy side of things rather than understanding exactly why they're doing what they're doing. In 2005, it wasn't that unusual for older data to be stored on stacks of floppy disks. And I remember often having to go to a file room to look up old analysis work that had been completed. I split hairs in my data science video over RAM and storage capacity, but I would have loved having any of even the base model options that are on the market today back in 2005. Storage was expensive. A half gig USB flash drive in 2005 was $39. You could get them a little bit bigger on the corporate side, but the consumer version topped out at four gigs. And you had to special order them. You usually couldn't find them in a store. And remember, stores were still really popular back in 2005. To put that in perspective, I picked up a one terabyte solid state drive for $135 last fall. That's less than seven cents for the same exact amount of storage. And yes, I really did have that gigantic desktop computer at my first job. Laptops were available, but they tended to be more expensive and have less processing power. 
The main tools I was using in 2005 were SAS as a programming language, MATLAB, as well as some reliability tools. There were also times where I was manually modeling probability distributions because it was actually quicker for me to hand model them than it was for the computer to process all of the data in them. Clearly there's been a lot of things that have changed since 2005, but not everything has changed. There are a few things that have remained the same. The fundamentals haven't changed. The foundation of analytics is still the same, even if the tools that we're using may be a little different. And even if many of the tools have changed, Python and R were still popular back in 2005, just like they are today. Excel is still a powerful tool, and people still pretend like it's beneath them to use Excel over a more advanced analytics tool. And Bill Gates was still pouring money into pandemic research, albeit in 2005 he was mainly working on reducing HIV, and in 2020 he's been pouring a lot of money and a lot of resources into COVID-19 or coronavirus. Speaking of which, our last major difference, no face masks.